So remember the Galaxy S10e? So this came out with the Galaxy S10 and the S10 Plus uh, in early 2019. And this phone specifically would be uh, going up against the likes of the iPhone XR at the time in that premium affordable range of smartphones. And it's been four years now already, can you believe it, that this phone has been out. And it still keeps up with the looks of the modern smartphones. Uh, it's still pretty competitive with today's phones. The body is a sleek and smooth glass. The frame is aluminum, a little shiny, but yet very grippy too, uh, with, rounded, with rounded edges. That makes it a really pleasant holding experience. The size of the phone is pretty compact though. It's, it's a pretty much the same exact size as the iPhone 14 Pro today, except it feels um, way lighter and the bezels are just super, super thin all across, not even, a, not even a chin or anything. And thus it makes it feel like you're holding an iPhone mini or something because it's so just lightweight and compact and just so easy to grip and use. The power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. And I think this fingerprint scanner is probably top five fingerprint scanners of all time. It's so precise, it's fast, clicky, of course. It is just a little bit too high up for me. I kind of have to shimmy my thumb up there to just tap it, but it's honestly one of the, the fastest and easiest fingerprint scanners to set up and use. So I updated this phone to the latest version of, versions of Android and One UI that I could get at the time of this recording, which are Android 12 and One UI 4.0. So credit to Samsung for still supporting this phone. And I just remember back in the day that software updates on Androids used to be such a pain and a hassle. Depending on what carrier you had, that determined how long it would take for your phone to get an update. Sometimes this process would take months, even years, I think. And now things are just a lot simpler, a lot easier. Even Android phones now get decently fast updates. And as far as using the phone, it is a Samsung experience all in all. One UI adds a lot of new smart things, no pun intended, to the phone. One UI 4.0 that is. I believe it probably even added some camera improvements too, but it's just that snappy, quick, simple Samsung user experience that we all know of. It's different because iOS and iPhones, it's just, using that phone is just more, I wanna say like swipey. It's a lot more glidey and flowy. I'm inclined to swipe around when I'm using an iPhone, but when I'm using a Galaxy phone, it's just more structured in a way. Not a bad thing. There's less swiping around. There's less glidiness in a way. You know, it, I noticed that I'm tapping more. This is sort of hard to explain, but if you used an iPhone and if you, if you used a Samsung phone, I think you'll understand. Not a big deal, but I just wanted to point that out. This is a good shot here, no? Wow. Can you guys tell I just love the sunset? <laughs> Let's get a selfie. I saw this shot and I knew it sort of might be really good. So how was that? How was the camera, the camera test? Rather than just like talk about the camera and ramble on about it, I would just rather show you guys in field, you know, what I'm looking at and what I'm trying to get a picture of. So you have a better sense of, you know, how the pictures actually should look, right? Just to talk about this camera, it's pretty good. It's pretty good for um, being four-ish years old now. One thing I'm not a fan of from Samsung has always been their selfies. I don't know about modern Samsung phones, but at least this one, I, I never really liked selfies on Samsung phones like from a while ago. The rest of the camera is fantastic. I love the ultra wide. I love the, the regular wide angle. And it, it really produces some quality, quality pics. They are just a little more, I want to say saturated than most phones, which I don't mind but the pictures turn out great and to talk about smart features this camera is pretty smart too it's nice you can just swipe up and then switch and switch between the uh, uh, front facing and the back camera that's nice to talk about video it's probably not 
the best video. So you have to remember this is back in 2019. Video was not really as big as it is now, but video is still good minus the stabilization. And what can I say? If, if you buy this phone now, I can pretty much guarantee that most people will not be disappointed in this camera. So really shout out to Samsung for putting a great camera in here. Yeah, so that's it my friends. Still a really good phone for the price, the Samsung Galaxy S10e. First of all, just fantastic, fantastic build. As you know, I'm a fan of compact phones and, and this is that, that true compact phone. Great camera system. Most photos look pretty good, especially in light like this. Let's take a sunset photo here. So, yeah, you see the camera is pretty good. Good speakers, and I forgot to mention a headphone jack. Great, great bright screen, uh, AMOLED screen at, at that too. That does get very deep blacks. And that classic, iconic GOAT fingerprint scanner. Really, a, really a great little phone uh, if you are a fan of compact phones. I, I know now that we're moving towards like bigger and better phones. I'm a type of person that really likes to keep old tech, and especially if it still is functional and it works. That's, that's my favorite thing. And this is definitely that. You won't, you probably won't find brand new, but used, you can easily find these for, I wanna say 100, 150 between there. But yeah, that's it. Let me know what type of videos you guys like. Do you like more inside, more outside videos like this? Me personally, I just love the outside videos. I love nature, you know, so that's why I'm always out here trying to chase that sunset or sunrise. And yeah, let me know what products, what tech I should make videos on. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.